I've previously spoken a lot on this channel about story arcs, running a character to go through changes and growth as the result of the plot, and I've also spoken about why a lack of this can cause professional wrestling to not be quite as compelling as it should be. But what if I told you that there was a way to write a story where the protagonist doesn't go through an emotional transformation at all, however, it still produces a great story? Well, what could this miracle writing technique be? Well, it just happens to be the topic of this episode, because today... Before we begin, I want to give a big thank you to all of my amazing Patreon supporters who helped to make this channel possible. And while I'm at it, I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters such as Bob86 and Cool Ass Jack. And now, let's get into the episode. Okay, first, allow me to say that I'm not suggesting that every storyline has to fit into this mold. And I'm also not disavowing anything I said from my previous videos about story arcs. I'm just merely presenting the flat arc as another option, as a good writer should have as many tools in their arsenal as possible. And also keep in mind, there's always an exception to every rule. Okay, so now, as far as this video concern, we're going to go over three main things today. We're going to cover what exactly a flat arc is, we're also going to take a look at some examples of it being done well, and we're also going to cover some of the best ways to flatten the curve. Alright, so let's just start with the obvious. What exactly is a flat arc? And, well, how can an arc actually be flat? Well, the term comes from character arcs, where a character will go through a change throughout the course of a story. With a flat arc, however, the main character doesn't really change at all. They enter the story with one point of view, a set of beliefs, and a specific emotional value. And by the end of the story, all those things are exactly the same as when we began. Now, ordinarily this would sound like a bad thing, and it would be, except the flat arc has another component to it other than just a protagonist, which would be... Everybody else. Take Back to the Future, one of my all-time favorite movies, by the way. In this story, Marty McFly goes back in time as the cool proto-Bueller that he is. Then by the end of the movie, he's still the same, except his house and family are much nicer. Oh, and for any of you who might want to point out that Marty McFly overcame his issue with being called Chicken, well, that wasn't introduced until the second movie and wasn't resolved until the third. Now, the idea with a flat arc is that instead of some catalyst causing the main character to change, it's the main character themselves that are actually the catalyst, and they're causing the change to happen in other people. Sticking with Back to the Future, younger Doc Brown learns that he can be a great inventor. The older Doc Brown learns that it's okay to alter the future if the circumstances are necessary. Marty's dad gains self-confidence, his mother stops falling for victims, and instead falls for heroes. And Biff stops being a bully. But Marty, on the other hand, stays exactly the same. Same goals, same outlook, same mentality. The transformational journey is for the others to take and not for him. Okay, great, but how does this apply to professional wrestling? Well, to answer that, why don't we take a look at one of the most successful storylines in all of wrestling history. Of course, I'm talking about Stone Cold Steve Austin vs. Vince McMahon. Although, truth be told, this rivalry really was more like several storylines all being shoved into one feud, but uh, we're just going to be talking about the first leg of this race, which was totally written like a classic flat arc. Starting with Stone Cold winning the title, Vince McMahon stated that Austin was not the kind of wrestler that he wanted to see as champion. Austin refused to conform, and McMahon went out of his way to try and get the belt off of him, and Austin did whatever it took to keep it. And over the next three years, Austin never yielded to McMahon's will. He stayed tried and true to his beer-swilling, pickup truck-driving, Texas rattlesnake self. However, during this time, it was the people around him that began to change. Now, yes, Vince McMahon himself most notably became the cartoon supervillain of the WWF, but that didn't even stick, since by the time Austin was hit by a car, McMahon had already turned face. And as for Vince's son Shane, he would also change alignments during this period as well. Just like The Undertaker, Kane, The Rock, and not to mention, Tess, Big Show, Ken Shamrock, and Mick Foley, otherwise known as The Union. With Vince McMahon becoming Mr. McMahon, this meant that any significant wrestler in WWF had to decide if they were for him or against him even if some of them did end up changing their mind a few times. But, no matter how many wrestlers switch sides during the beginning of this feud, Austin always stayed the same. And not just in terms of being a heel or face, but just in his overall way of thinking. Austin's defiance caused Vince to escalate his heel game, and the other wrestlers reacted to that. Austin was the spark that set off the chain reaction that rippled throughout the entire company. Alright, so now that we covered all that, how exactly does the flat arc work? Well, the biggest key to it is making sure that the protagonist 
is right. Some of you may remember a previous episode I did on The Bad Play, where I used an old Blues Traveler song to explain the value of a flawed hero. Now, everything I said in that video is still true. Just remember that the purpose of this episode is to just give another way to tell a properly constructed story. Furthermore, flan arcs still do kind of apply this principle, as it's really the outside characters that are the heroes in this concern. Like with the previously mentioned examples, George McFly becomes the hero after saving Lorraine, McFoley went from being McMahon's lackey to becoming the ultimate underdog story. Because again, it's the main characters that are the catalyst that bring about the change that we want to see in the world. And it's the secondary players that take on that positive growth and become the change. Think of it as it's a wonderful life, except the protagonist is Clarence and everybody else is Jimmy Stewart. Now, as far as making a flat arc work, just like with any story, there has to be a problem. There has to be something wrong with the lives of the people in the story, something for them to overcome. Like everyone bowing down to the school bully or a dictator running a wrestling company. Then the main character gets thrown into the mix by either winning the WWF title or going back in time. They then fix the problem, but not just for themselves, but for the other characters in the story as well. Some some of which become better people in the end. And for some other examples, let's look at the Occupy Raw movement and The Hunger Games. One is a dystopia run by a bunch of horrible aristocrats who don't care about the needs or desires of the people at all and just torture them as they grow richer and more powerful. The other is The Hunger Games. In both cases, the plot revolves around one character who brings about the revolution and looks to take down the oppression and creates a movement that changes the world around them, proving that one person can make a difference, staying strong in their resolve. But now that I've mentioned it, there is a little bit of debate when it comes to what a flat arc really is. As there are some who would say that the main character doesn't have to remain steadfast, and they can have doubt at some point as long as it works to strengthen their beliefs, and as long as they return to their original state by the end of the story. On the other hand, there are those who say that a true flat arc has to have a protagonist that remains constant, because if they waver only to return back to their original point, well, that's not a flat arc, that's just an arc. Who's right? Well, I'll just leave that up to you. Anyway, moving this forward and in terms of professional wrestling, how do we take any of this into account? Well, there are many different ways, but I say that the best is to address something that's really wrong with the state of the business. Which, to be fair, is something that WWE is kind of trying to do. One of the most frequent examples of this is Brock Lesnar being the champion. That's the problem, and so WWE repeatedly tells the story of some new babyface solving that problem by relieving Brock of the belt, and the challenger will come out on the other side of the story with the exact same mentality that they had going into it. However, that alone does not a flat arc make, as it really does need to start impacting some of the other members of the roster. After these babyface wins, Brock isn't any different as a result of his defeat. He's still nothing more than just a squash monster, Paul Heyman is still the same, and no one else in the company is any better for it. So when you're writing these, make sure you don't confuse a no arc for a flat one. Because with the best flat arcs, toppling the antagonist is what inspires others and creates personal growth. And with the current state of things, I think a little bit of inspiration would definitely go a long way. Well, there you go. What are some awesome flat arc storylines that you could think of? Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and making sure that you're subscribed right here to this channel. Thanks so much for watching and thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. And as always, Dave knows.